Good morning, I am James, and I am here to introduce you to Yasminko Halilovic. I don't have a hashtag to give you. Um, I come from old media, which is television, when people used to sit down at, uh, at dinner, or at least they did so in our house, and we used to watch the troubles over in Ireland. And I went to high school in the middle of London, where they rebuilt the school, and they, they, they built this uh, central hall um, with only very small windows at the top in the event of any bombing. That, that was the world then, and I think that as much as we talk about one young world, I think it's one chaotic world right now. Uh, when, when, I, when I interview people on television, one of the great joys and privileges is not just hearing what they say, but also um, going into their personalities, asking them about their childhood, and through that, understanding what some of those early emotional experiences are, which inform their thinking today. And when I spoke to uh, Paul Kagami of Rwanda, the president there, uh, he talked very much about moving to Uganda as a very young child. I think he was about three years old. And uh, as a refugee, taking his class under the shade of a tree, and his thigh was his exercise book. They would use chalk to draw on it because they didn't have any paper and pen. Uh, in, in the camps there. And Robert Mugabe, because I think John has also uh, interviewed him as well, he talked also about his classroom experiences. He talked about um, waking up late for school one day and, and um, um, missing his, his wake-up time. And, and he, he said he, he slept in bed and he didn't know what to do. Should he continue lying there in bed and risk being even more late for school? Or should he go to school and be laughed at by all the other boys. That was what consumed him at, I think, about six or seven years of age. In the end, he went to school and his father bumped into the road and, and whipped him, he said. So I think when you understand um, people's early experiences, they tell you so much about the life that follows. And so when I sat down with uh, Yasminko in a room outside over here, I asked him also what his first experiences were. And he told me about um, moving home. Uh, at around the ages of four or five years old. And he moved home a couple of times between the ages of four and eight because that's, of course, when the war in what was then Yugoslavia had already broken out. Uh, he, he moved home. The conflict was all across Sarajevo. Um, but at that time, um, where the conflict became deeper, they moved to a cousin's house for a few weeks, and then they moved somewhere else and moved somewhere else after that. Um, he says that um, he does have memories of the childhood before the age of four from photographs and from the stories that his parents tell him. So in a way, that's proof that there was a childhood as normal as one can expect that pre-existed that. And then I asked him about the ages between four and eight, and he said he was pretty lucky as luck goes because he wasn't wounded, he didn't die, and no one around him, those people closest to him, die either. Um, but those memories stayed with him. And much later on, a couple of years ago, he started writing a book. And he started writing a book that was um, a recollection of a 1,000 people and their memories of the war in Sarajevo. He limited them to 160 characters. I don't know why it was 140. And uh, it was in the shape of text messages or social media posts, photographs, letters, diaries. And as he collected these memories of individuals, he discovered that memories are often associated to visual objects. So then he started collecting the objects and he started setting up what is now the War Childhood Museum. It started off as a temporary exhibition that traveled around Sarajevo. And in December, the Sarajevo local government there has given him a space to rent. So it becomes a permanent physical museum in the traditional sense. Um, I asked him what he wants everyone here to know. And he says that the experience of children, specifically in war, is universal. And if we understand the consequences of children in war, we will then understand the importance of peace. Please would you join me in welcoming Yasminko. Thank you for introduction. The war in my country ended 20 years ago, but today a new generation suffers its consequences. Bosnia-Herzegovina's politics remain locked in a cycle wherein politicians appeal to people's traumas and fears, 
reinforcing ethnic prejudices and encouraging conflict, discrimination, and even small-sky violence. Young people from different ethnic groups do not visit the same cafes in some parts of the country, and children attend ethnically segregated schools, euphemistically titled two schools under one roof. If post-conflict societies, such as Bosnia and Herzegovina, are to achieve long-term peace and security, survivors must reconcile with the past and look towards the future. Six years ago, I started War Childhood Project by collecting stories about war childhood from my friends. Then I branched out to their friends. War Childhood became grassroots movement. In, two ter in 2013, the War Childhood book was published. It featured more than 1,000 short recollections of the conflict from just as many people. The book received recognition from near and far, becoming one of the top, top 10 selling books in my country, and later editions were published in German and Japanese. More importantly, War Childhood triggered old memories and sparked new dialogues in Bosnia. Since starting this project, I have heard so many stories, and I learned so much about this experience. I learned war is one thing for a boy living with his parents, and a completely different experience for a girl living in an orphanage. I learned war is not the same for a boy who went to fight and for a girl who was raped, for a boy who lost his father and for a girl who lost both parents. War can even be different for two brothers living under the same roof. Working on the book, I also discovered that people have a tendency to associate their memories to various objects and that they keep these object for, objects for as long as 20 years. I started collecting these items and their related stories, and I decided to create the War Childhood Museum. Much like the book, the War Childhood Museum enables survivors to share their stories and to read stories of their peers. On an individual level, this empowers survivors to face the past and prevents trauma in their own children. On the collective level, it supports mutual understanding among people who have different views of the past. The War Childhood Museum allows the country's future leaders to confront painful memories in a way that underscores our shared values rather than pitting ethnic groups against each other. By focusing on the common experiences of the war's youngest and most innocent victims, the War Childhood Museum contributes to a more inclusive historical narrative. In just one year, our collection has grown to 3,000 items and almost 100 hours of video testimonies. Hundreds of people use our platforms to tell their stories for the very first time. Our first exhibition in Sarajevo was visited by more than 4,000 people in just 10 days making it one of the most visited exhibitions in the city's history. However, metrics are not the only indicators of this project's impact. Real stories confirm project's positive effects just as well. Take, for example, the successful young woman who was wounded when she was only nine years old during the Bosnian War. She was taken to Germany for a treatment and later settled in Croatia with her parents. Although she had passed through Bosnia several times, she never came back to her home city, Sarajevo, because she couldn't face the neighborhood where she had been wounded. After 18 years, she came back to participate in this project. Stories like this one, stories about the real impact on people's lives, are what keeps us moving forward. We are currently touring 15 cities around the country with our exhibition. We also run workshops to start conversations which shift the focus from differences to shared experiences, and which bring the community together. Our aim is to expand and replicate this work from Bosnia to other post-conflict zones in the world. We believe shifting the focus from histories to stories, from official narratives to personal experiences, can be beneficial for survivors and for their communities. We live in a time of mounting extremism. To ensure that our calls for peace are heard, we need all the help we can get from leaders around the world. The War Childhood Museum promises to give people a voice as well as a platform where they can stand together, act together, and build a better future for themselves and their children together. Thank you.